main thing is that I never even thought I was going to be able to become an artist. You know in Nigeria, when you grow up, your parents are not even... Art is not even a thing that you can even say that you want to do. And this is the story of how I got a residency in London. I almost didn't even apply. When I got the mail that I was part of like four people they had selected like to get to the next page, I was very, very surprised. I was still like very shocked as well like when they announced that I was the winner. My art took me here. I remember like tweeting about it that I want my art to take me to places like all over the world. In my first trip out of the country was sponsored by my art. But that is also something that I think that comes with getting big opportunities, just that self-doubt that can come from that. My most confident era was when I was still learning. The person I was learning from, their art style was influencing mine. I had to like start practicing on my own. I wasn't even having any, oh god, I'm the worst artist in the world. I was literally like the best. Nobody could have told me anything like. Hi, my name is Chigozi Obi. I am a visual artist living and working in Lagos, Nigeria. Can I say this on camera? Like, and this is the story of how I got a residency in London and how it's been for me since then. <laughs> Hey folks, welcome to my YouTube channel. My name is PC Timmy. I'm a multifaceted creator, a marketing professional, and a teacher. And I'm passionate about growing people and growing businesses. See, the goal is that anybody who comes across me or any piece of my content is inspired and or motivated to get better in your business, in your career, and in your life. As you watch this video, like and comment and share to your friends and family if you like it. Please subscribe to my YouTube channel. Enjoy this video and I'll see you. Peace. The residency, the funny thing about the residency actually is, I will start with the name of the residency. It is the Artex Lagos um, Artex Prize that Access Bank sponsors that I won. And the funny thing about that is that I almost didn't even apply, literally. I had seen it and passed it and very close to the deadline, someone sent it to me and they told me to apply and they think that it would be a good, you know, opportunity for me. It wasn't my first time applying though, I'd applied like, you know, previous years before, but it didn't come through. So I was just like, okay, you know, I'm gonna apply. And I did. And when I got the mail that I was part of like the four people they had selected, like to get to the next stage, I was very, very surprised, I guess. Cause I mean, I hadn't really gotten like into a lot of residencies or well, maybe like two or one before. Um, and I just didn't think like, you know, it was gonna be a thing, especially because I'd applied before and just didn't get in. So then I went for like, you know, the next stage and everything. And I met with like artists, well, some of who I'd be friends with already. And it was like really cool just, you know, being in their presence and it made it like the whole process easier and like more fun. And yeah, like on the day of like presenting, you know, I presented, I was very like nervous and everything, but also like I did it and blah, blah, blah. And the funny thing is that people kept telling me also that like, you know, I would win it and stuff. And they think that like, you know, I had like a very good chance, but I just never like felt like it was going to be me. So I was still like very shocked as well, like when they announced that I was the winner. Um, and yeah, I was very excited too, cause it was also my first time traveling out of the country, you know, and it was like a sponsored trip. So it's like the best thing you can get. And yeah. Um, that was how I like got it. So I went to London and you know, London was like just so different from like Nigeria anyway, but also not so unfamiliar. I feel like because, I mean, I, I haven't traveled like out of the country before then, but I also grew up on a lot of like foreign TV and everything. So it wasn't just so like crazy to witness, but also just like still different. Like, you know, the roads are good and like people are using like public transports without like having to like, fight and stuff and just like yeah it was i don't know it was really and just like a lot of why can i say this on camera like a lot of white people and it's the same <laughs> okay not like there's anything wrong with white people but you know just having all of them you like you being the minority in a place is like oh wow like okay yeah um not feeling like inferior or anything but just like you know different um so yeah, like I went to London and the residency was really good because it allowed me um, just have, I didn't have to like work for the residency, but then I had a show after, so I had to still create work. So it just gave me um, time to like explore other things. Like they told us to like go out and explore and I already had some friends in London, like Nigerian friends who helped me just integrate with the space. Every other weekend I was looking for something to do because I always want to have fun wherever I go to and like, you know, make a lot of memories. Um, I was saying before that I was very sad still like when I was there because the weather was very, you know, it was kind of gloomy and everything and I'm a very, you know, 
sunny person. I think also like I had to layer up like quite a lot more than I wanted to. I am a person that I like, can say Asha Okut, that's <laughs> So I wasn't really able to like, you know, get into that like as much as I wanted to, just because I didn't want to like, you know, freeze to death. Um, but it was really cool. Like I just, it was different. Like, you know, um, I think something that was maybe small, but like very interesting was how it didn't get dark till like eight or like nine. And that was like, just so crazy to me. Like. It's like eight and like, you know, it's still sunny. I really enjoyed that as a person that likes taking pictures also. I really enjoyed that because you don't have to rush too much, I guess, for, you know, because you're like, oh, the sun is going to go down in a bit and stuff. You have like more time. Um, and yes, and the food. Ah, I miss Nigerian food so much. I was ordering a lot of Nigerian food still because Nigerians, we know how to. I was ordering like Nigerian food and like Jamaican food because I feel like our palates are very similar. So it's like, it was good. But the rest of the things I was trying, ah, I don't know how to cook in that place. I'll just, I'll just say that I didn't really know how to cook. Um, and their drinks also were like very watered down, like the sugar was very watered down. I was just like, Nigeria, please, I need Nigerian Fanta or something like that. So, um, but yeah, like it was a really good experience. And it also like, you know, boosted my confidence a lot as like a person and just like an artist that my art took me here. I remember like tweeting about it that I want my art to take me like to places like all over the world, you know? And it was very interesting that you know, my first trip out of the country was sponsored by my art. You know, I had a fund, I had a place to live, I had money to do things. I wasn't like struggling or anything. It was very um, like full circle for me. And it just like really boosted my confidence. Even coming back and you know being able to have like my solo at Art X, which is like the biggest fair in Africa, it was really really cool. And just like all the people that even were I don't know like happy for me it was really cool. And um, yeah, you know, I also met like other Nigerians in London as well. But it also made me like realize that I want to live in Nigeria. Like I really want to live here. I feel most at home here. I feel like happiest here. Um, I love like our culture and our like nightlife and everything. I'm not really, I don't know, the pub life is not really for me per se, but the party life, like Afrobeat life and that kind of thing is more for me. Um, so that was also like a very, you know, like I had to process that as well because you know, the way the country is is not really encouraging. And especially if you want to like have a family and kids, those are things to like think about like where do you want to raise them and all of that so yeah but all in all it was like a very um, amazing experience and I'm very thankful for it I look forward to applying for like more things I've been feeling a lot of like pressure like after I think like just like oh is this going to be like it is this going to be like the biggest thing in like my life or like you know are people like expecting so much more from me and that like puts pressure on me sometimes so like I took a break from like working for like a while um but now i feel like i'm you know stepping back up and like getting more confidence with just like feeling um okay to like work and like apply for things again and just like you know kill like the doubt and stuff but that is also something that i think that comes with getting big opportunities just that self-doubt that can come from that and um yeah may we always be able to get past it Amen. I have a question. Um, tell me a bit about your journey towards becoming an artist. Mm -hmm. So you started with just saying how you applied for the actor exhibition, but I'm wondering, like, even before then, how did you, what was it like getting to the point where you had work to I would apply for this residency? So the funny thing is that I never even thought I was going to be able to become an artist. You know, in Nigeria, where you grow up, your parents are not even, art is not even a thing that you can even say that you want to do. So it was up until the point when I was supposed to go in for mass comm actually um, for university. But then that year, Unilag was having like a strike that was for, on for like six months or something. So I was at home and I started like drawing some more. I had started like in secondary school, but I was like drawing some more. And then my aunt and my cousin were like, oh, why don't you like pursue this instead? And of course I didn't think it was gonna be possible, but they helped me like speak to my dad and my dad was, you know, not very fond of the idea, but like he let me. And the funny thing still is that even when I went to school to study it, they don't necessarily teach you anything per se. It's more like theoretical and stuff. But for the practical um, 
things I had to learn like from my mates who already had like experience or and when I went for like my IT rather that was like when I really really learned how to paint and that was also when like for the first time ever I was seeing like artists like you know making money off like art full time and it changed my whole perspective on like everything I literally like abandoned my schoolwork not like I wasn't doing it but I just didn't even care for it and I started like practicing on my own and focusing more on like increasing like you know my skill and everything um based off that and when I finished I still went back to like intern like for my NYC but after a while I had to like start practicing on my own because the person I was learning from their art style was influencing mine <clears throat> And I was just making work that looked very similar to his, which wasn't like just helping me carve my own niche. Um, so yeah, so from there, it was like just like, you know, creating work and like practicing. And then I had this mentor that was like, you know, you have like a lot to like talk about and like share with the world and everything. Why don't you use your art as like a means to also channel that? And so I started like, you know, making art about like stuff I was feeling and about like, you know, talking about being a woman and, you know, just being, like women's rights generally like the world or like Nigeria and it was just like connecting with like more people and um, yeah like and I started like applying for more stuff and like people started you know inviting me to show at things and just all of that I feel like the process has been very long and it's taken a lot of hard work but it's also just been like very like up and down like I've had because I think art, because art is like a career that is also very like tied to how you feel and like what you're creating. You can just, it can be very hard. Like even when I'm painting stuff about myself and sharing about like, you know, my personal life, it's very, it can be very hard to like share that with the public because it means you're very vulnerable as well. So it's just very like, you know, up and down. Sometimes I feel like the worst artist in the world and like, God, what am I doing? Sometimes I feel like I'm most, like the greatest artist in the world and like yeah like everyone should just like you know yeah you know recognize what it's yeah the journey has been very 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 hard and I think people also think that you know when you get to a certain stage maybe nothing can touch you anymore like but I feel like for me the most time I even had like the like my most confident era was when I was still learning I feel like I, I didn't even then I I, I wasn't even having any oh god i'm the worst artist in the world i was literally like the best nobody could have told me anything like you know but i feel like the more things i achieve and the better i get the doubts like you know they also grow with it and everything so it's like you have to like five more to kill them as well um but yeah it's been and what actually helps when the doubts come mm, what helps so sometimes i just like take breaks i i literally just like leave my studio i don't do anything relating to art and I just go and do like other things that you know make me connect to I guess life more as a person I think sometimes not thinking about it helps me you know connect to other things I love so that when I come back I come back to it from like a fresh perspective and just like oh I missed you I haven't seen you in a while and this is me talking to my art so let's reconnect and you know have a new experience again um, sometimes I go through my pages like my website or like my Instagram because I have to go back down to like when I first started to see like oh man this is what you were doing before and like see where you are now and it's not been easy and you know you've been improving and you've been increasing and like people have been recognizing that as well so that also reminds me sometimes um, about like what I've been I've been doing and like helps like you know boost my confidence um, sometimes I just like you know I have to like talk to people to my friends and everything because they also like remind me about like stuff I've been doing and sometimes they're also going through the same thing so that helps me feel not so alone in like the process um, of just like being artists and yeah recently so like I have a collective it's called the artist resource collective so we had like this community hangout recently and we invited like artists to just you know come and hang and chill and like play or like talk and, and during the talk like artists were sharing like somebody literally shared how they had their first solo and just like the pressure they felt after that and how you know they felt like oh are they going to like get better or like you know people are expecting them to do more and I connected with that so much because of like you know the thing with like Artex so it's very nice to like speak to other artists who you don't even who you know or you might not know and just like you know hear their thoughts on this and know that you're not alone so definitely just having a community helps 
um, those are some of the things I do. Yeah. Final question: What are you looking forward to the most? Like it's almost a year after your residency. What do you feel like you're looking forward to in the next? Looking forward to next. Five years. Hmm. Oh, I feel like I'm looking forward to maybe my next. Or maybe I, because this was like my solo, my first solo, but also it was like at a fair. So I kind of I'm looking forward to like my first like proper proper solo at like a gallery. I haven't started like planning for it yet, but I know that when I want to do it, like even for this one, like you know I I, I was like okay, how do I think outside the box to like presenting and everything, and I think it, that was like um, carved out well because it wasn't just your normal like white walls with. I made like some very nice wooden frames for my work. I had like this like TV installation playing and my walls were pink. It was very nice. I'm looking forward to like the next one and just how much more bigger it's going to be. Like, you know, just making it like, you know, even more amazing for people to witness. Um, and I'm also looking forward to just like, I mean, I think moving forward to like, sorry, moving to a bigger studio. Cause I want to have like, just like a bigger space Honestly, my goals right now are very, let me see, they're very like small in a way. They're small, but they're big. I had to, before I, I feel like I used to put like so much pressure on myself by being like, you know what, I want to exhibit at this museum before I like turn to this and blah, blah, blah. But I had like a moment when I was just like, um, and that also happened around like when I lost my mom in like 2019, a lot of things like changed for me, just my perspective on life and everything. So what I was, I was like, I don't necessarily think I want to do, like be like, I want to exhibit here before this is this anymore, but be just more like, I want to create work that makes me like really, really, really happy, you know? And really like when I'm looking at it, I'm just like, yeah, this is, you know, what it is. And I feel like that has even been helping me more because I think like when I create my best work, it's easier for people to recognize that this is a very, very good, piece of art or like very very as opposed to putting so much pressure on myself to be like okay this has to be so fantastic that this museum is calling me out and like blah 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 and I'm not saying that that's a bad way to look at things also it's just personally so that's what I'm saying like my goals are like very very small in a way but like big in a way so it's more like okay on screen work that is very nice and when I when I talk about it people can connect very well to the story I'm telling or like moving to a new studio or like you know Having my next solo or trying out a new medium that I've been wanting to try out since those are how I think a lot of my goals are like right now. Okay. So hi, my name is Chigazi and I hope you enjoyed my story on how I got my residency in London and how being an artist has been for me generally.